Hey everybody, it is Monday night, and uh, that means tonight we're doing Merlo's Movie Massacre, episode 21. Thank you all for tuning in. I see we have a couple people in the chat already. Susie Lopez, hey! You're like always the first person, I think. <laughs> and we also got uh, Feltrick Fence. I don't know, I think you might be new. I don't think we've ever had you before, but correct me if I'm wrong. Let me know if, if you're brand new here. Uh, if so, welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. And Hilly Billy Man is here. Hey, Sawyer fans. Yes, we got a very Sawyer filled show for you today, guys. <laughs> very, very Sawyer filled. <laughs> it's going to be fun. It's, this is going to be kind of fun. I was originally, uh, I, if, those of you who tuned into the last show, uh, probably remember me saying I was going to do a ranking video this, uh, this Monday. Uh, that changed because you know what I saw this, I saw this and I felt like I just had to. I felt like I have to talk about this. So, so yes, thank you guys. Filthy Dan is in the uh, chat as well. Hey Dan, Dan the man, Filthy Dan the man. <laughs> I love it. I love it. He's got a great channel too. You guys go check uh, out his uh, his show as well. He has a he he does great stuff with the stream demons. He's part of the stream demons. They all have great stuff. So uh, I pronounced it right, Veltric Fence. I, that's actually that's right. Thank you, Dylan Lacey. Hey, finally made it. This is your first time as well, I believe. I love seeing new people on the show, and since you are all, since we do have some new people, please do make sure that you hit that like button right below where I'm pointing, somewhere in there. And if and again, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. I really appreciate it. We're closing in on 900 subs. Just a hundred off of a thousand. We should be uh, our. That's our goal for um, our next Indiegogo campaign for the Sawyer Massacre, uh, which we're launching next month. So we're not that far away. If we hit a thousand subscribers on this YouTube channel, uh, with sometime in that Indiegogo campaign, we're gonna do a live giveaway on this show, a live giveaway of one of the perks from. Uh, from the uh, Indiegogo campaign, from the Sawyer Massacre Indiegogo campaign, and it won't be like it won't be like the five dollar special thanks perk. It'll be something a little bit, a little bit nicer. It's not going to be the executive producer perk or anything like that, but it'll be it'll be a decent perk. <laughs> it'll be a decent one. You won't be disappointed. But it'll be a, a bit of a giveaway. We might do a little trivia or something that night. We'll see. Got to hit a thousand subs on this channel though, so we're like. 118 or something like that now 119 i think i checked it we're at about uh, 881 so yeah we're we're we can do it we can do it <laughs> uh mandy cantone is also in the chat hello hello there we go thank you guys for tuning in this is always awesome and uh, as usual, you guys can uh, follow the social media uh, links that you also see in the description as well. The Sawyer Masker is on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Most of you guys know me from Instagram anyways, so you're already following me on Instagram, I'm sure. But Facebook, Twitter as well. And even Reddit, but I don't really... I don't use Reddit very much. There's a lot of nasty people on Reddit, but I don't care. I st I still po I still posted on Reddit tonight that hey we're we're doing a, a show on the Texas Chainsaw Massacre page. So it's a little fun. Wayne Sutherland, I think that's another new new person in the chat. Good to see, glad you guys are are tuned in. Yes, 118 away. Thanks for con confirming that, Dan. We can totally do that. We can totally do that by the end of April, right? Before the uh, Indiegogo ends. I think we totally can. I see no reason why not. <laughs> we can totally do it. Um, yeah. Actually, during the last Indiegogo campaign, I think during the campaign, the pay, uh, this, uh, this channel went up around 150 subscribers. Around there anyway. So definitely, definitely, definitely possible. I uh, want to give uh, some time to shout out, uh, give a brief shout out to uh, Michelle of Breathless Beauties. I don't see her in the chat tonight. She usually is. Well, she sometimes is, sometimes isn't. She's on the uh, East Coast, so it's a little late for her. And I think some of you other guys are also on the East Coast, and you, you still manage to stay up late enough for, <laughs> for my show. Thank you guys all for being able to do that, especially on a Monday. Oh, that'd be tough for me. Uh, this would be 11 o'clock. Holy crap. That'd be tough. 
But uh, Michelle has a little company called Breathless Beauties, uh, where she makes these horror-themed dolls. They're pretty awesome. I'll show you some of them. And mo again, most of you have seen these before, but uh, for the new people, she is out of Syracuse, Syracuse New York. Free shipping, shipping in the U.S. I love the leather face doll. That's, that's my favorite. I want it. I want it. <laughs> and this one was recent for Brett Man of Good Real Hunting. The ghost face, uh, Brett, Brett, I guess, is a, is a huge Scream fan. So he got uh, the ghost face doll. <laughs> Look, that's him posing with it. And I guess he was going for the Chiefs last night. I don't know if <laughs> you can see there. Uh. <laughs> I'm Canadian, so I don't really care. But, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but, you know, I'm just, I know a lot of Chiefs fans were disappointed. Um, I can make fun of Brett a little bit because he's not in the chat right now. So there you go. <laughs> Kenesha Bradley is also in the chat as well. And Marco Reaction, I think that's another new... Boy, I'm getting lots of newbies tonight. Thank you guys all for tuning in. Probably met you all from Instagram, but, you know, check out our other social media links again in the comments. So, yeah, that's it. So, yeah, Bre uh, Breathless Beauties, yeah, I, her links are in the description as well. I always put her links in the description uh, because, you know, she does great horror-themed art. And you guys are horror fans, I take it, right? At least I hope you are because this is a horror-themed show. Uh, I focus a lot on Texas Chainsaw Massacre on this show, but, you know, I do other horror stuff as well. I have even, in my earlier shows, even jumped out of horror a little bit, but we are definitely keeping this show all horror from now on. Definitely. <laughs> it's got to be scary, right? Uh, so, I'm actually kind of surprised. I'm the I, I haven't seen anybody on the internet or YouTube or anything even talking about this yet. But I was just surfing the net the other day, always kind of looking for updates on the brand new Texas Chainsaw Massacre film. Um, and I guess I found one. <laughs> I guess I found an update. And nobody's talking about it. It was just a simple IMDB update. And uh, we're going to talk about it here, okay, guys? We are going to talk about it. So, legendary actress Alice Krieg... She's the first one uh, to the left there. Alice Krieg has been cast as Sally Hardesty, as you can see. And you can see some of these other actors I've never heard of before cast as uh, other named people I've never heard of before. But, I mean, Alice Krieg I've, I've heard of, I know of, I've seen a lot, a fair amount of her work. Um, but yeah, you can see this is right from IMDb, folks. So she is cast as Sally Hardesty. In the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre film. So, what do you guys think of this? I'm surprised. I am a little bit surprised that nobody has talked about this yet. This was a few days ago that I saw this. Like I said, I was originally going to be doing a ranking video tonight. And I changed my plans also due to the fact that I'm also going to be sharing some behind the scenes uh, pictures for you guys from our recent uh, trailer shoots. We I'll say shoots because we did two of them. One in Texas and one here in Canada. So I'll be sharing behind the scenes from both of those. But uh, anyways, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, she was billed as part of the cast for a, quite a while now, but her, she was nameless. So we didn't see we didn't see who she was playing. We just said Alice Krieg. I'm like, okay, I know who that is. She, I, I mostly know her from... I'm nerding out a little bit here, guys. Getting out of horror. Star Trek First Contact. I am a bit of a Trekkie, as well of, as well as a Star Wars fan as well. I'm one of those that goes both ways a bit. <laughs> they say you can't like you can't like Star Trek and Star Wars at the same. Well, I kind of do, but I I hate some of them too as well. So I mean, well, hate's a strong word. But yeah, I know her mostly as the Boar Queen from uh, Star Wars First Contact. But, I mean, looking at her IMDb, I mean, she was in Silent Hill. She was in one of the Thor movies, Thor Dark World. Yeah, and Sleepwalkers. as well, A bunch of other stuff. I've seen her in quite a number of stuff. And, you know, she's good. She's a, actually a... I'll say this. She is a great, great actress. She is, she's really good. Uh, and I, I really... 
I think that she could do it. Now, does that mean she should should do it? I don't know. <laughs> um, first off, she's British, um, but at the same time, British actors are awesome. They're really, really good. Uh, I'll get to the chat in just a bit here. I just want to share my thoughts a little bit. I know you guys are chatting up a storm here, so... <laughs> So I don't want to ignore you guys. I know I don't. I don't like to ignore you guys, but I'll, I'll get to your guys' chats in just a little bit here. But uh, um, where was I going with this? Oh yeah, she, the British act. British actors can do American usually pretty pretty easily. In fact, I think she's done a fair amount of American accents from what I can remember. Pretty sure she has. Um, so I have no doubt in my mind that she will be able to pull off uh, the right accent. Um. Even her look, I mean, we're, we got to remember we're casting a 40-year different, 45-year different different version of that character. So, um, I, I think with that much time gap, I mean, you, you could believe that she would look that much different. In fact, Marilyn Burns looked quite a bit different, you know, when she was just before she had died, had pa uh, passed on. Uh, than she did in the original. She she actually did not age very well. I have to say that. Um, uh, she was a heavy smoker from whatever. But anyways, uh, that's beside the point. So, I mean, I'm okay with the look. Uh, one thing is going to be hard, though, is the voice. Again, when you age, your voice changes. So it, it can still be believable. But I do hope that Alice will attempt at least a little bit to kind of get the tonality a little bit. Alice has a lower register voice than Marilyn did. So that, that's one thing I definitely noticed from comparing the two uh, style of voices. It was one of the biggest things that threw me off. I know getting off of horror a little bit here, but but going to Star Wars, talking about the younger Han Solo uh, in Solo, his voice was just not right for the role. It was a totally different type of voice. Like even... Ten, if that's ten years before the first Star Wars, it's, it just doesn't it doesn't fit. It's a totally different type of voice, uh, and I think it was that threw me off more than the the way he looked or anything like that. So, um, it it's a it's a tough thing to do, um, but I have confidence in her acting. I have. Plenty of confidence in her acting. We've got more new chatters. We've got <laughs> Lazy Reviewer and Degrees Centigrade. Thank you all for joining the chat tonight. You guys are awesome. You guys are awesome. I will get to uh, your guys' chats now. But yeah, that's my thoughts, basically. That's the biggest challenge is, you know, it's hard to go from... she's She would be an alto if you were going by, like, singing voices. I'm a musician, so I know all this stuff. So Alice Creed would be an alto, and... Uh, Marilyn would would have been a soprano, so uh, altos can get do it, but uh, it's it's tougher for them for sure. It's tougher for them. So let me go into the chat a bit, see what you guys are saying. Uh, do, 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 do anybody saying anything? What do we got here? Uh, Filthy Dan says I've been giving Brett Man a hard time all day on account of the Super Bowl. <laughs> well, why wouldn't you? It's I. You know what I I. I'm a being Canadian. I'm a hockey guy, and I'm a Canucks fan. I get given hard times lots. My team has never won the Stanley Cup. Uh, Alice was great in the recent Gretel and Hansel. I haven't seen that yet, Hilly Billy Man. So uh, uh, I'll have to check that out. But yeah, I mean, I've seen her in a ton of stuff, and uh, you know, she played the witch. She, I, I could totally buy that. I bet she would be. She, yeah, she must have. She must have killed it. Uh, Mar uh, Marco reaction. They need to hurry up and drop the trailer. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of wondering when it, we, we're not really hearing any big news. In fact, like this this casting of Sally, it was no news dropped about it. I feel like it's it's bigger news than than they've made it out to be because it's like nobody knows about it. The I'm the first person that I can find. That's actually talking about this, you know. Uh, given sure, it's not, it's not the casting of Leatherface. Now, once the casting of Leatherface is announced, that'll be pretty huge. That'll be pretty huge. But uh, 
I I mean I would it'd be stupid not to actually you know share that with the media. So this was obviously not shared with the media at, at all. It's just all of a sudden, oh, they updated their IMDb. Oh, she's actually she she's Sally. We can she's playing Sally, so we'll put her on there as Sally, and it's nobody will even notice, and nobody has except me. I, I think I don't know. Did any of you guys in the chat notice before I did? I noticed three days ago. Yeah, it was three days. It was, I believe it was Friday the, Friday night that I. Uh, Maybe even during the day that I that I found it. So if any of you guys found it out before then, let me know. But as far as I know, I'm the only one talking about it on the internet. So uh, again, not as big as like a Leatherface casting, but still, it's a significant thing. Uh, what else? Who else we got here? Play the witch. Yeah, we read that. Uh, Filthy Dan says, shit, some Brits play Americans better than some Americans do, yeah. Well, you know what, though, Dan, I, Brit, British people, Brit, the, the acting courses that they go through in uh, Britain is not like it is in the States. Uh, so they, they get so much more training there. They really do. Uh, they let, British take their acting very seriously. There's not a lot of British actors that I'm going to say, eh, he's kind of mediocre, or she, you know, she's not so good, or he's not so good. They're usually all pretty top notch. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. Well, I'll leave it at that. But yeah, anyways. <laughs> Agree. Santa Great is in the chat. Hello, uh, Philly Dan saying hi. Blah blah blah. Uh, Uh, just chatting with each other. That's good. That's good. Uh, Marco reaction. I worried how the character is going to fit into the new movie. Yeah, I'm a little bit worried about that too. Uh, yeah. That, like, is Sally going to be a big part of this? Or is it just a cameo? And if it is just a cameo, it's kind of throwing away a great talent like Alice Creek. You know, if it's just a cameo, if she's in it to... Yeah, that's that's you. You've got you raise a pretty good point there. You raise a pretty good point there, Marco. Marco reaction. <laughs> I like the name Marco reaction. <laughs> uh, Lee Billy man, yeah, barely any news on this new Texas Chainsaw music coming out this year. I know it's coming out this year. That's the funny thing. Uh, even the big horror sites haven't said much. I don't think there's much, to, I, there probably isn't much to say. I'm not giving up hope on this film, guys. I, I'm really hoping that this is going to be good. Uh, I am I would hope that they're going to try to release it in the summer. I feel like that's where it should go. I think that October is going to be filled with all, like, is too much competition in October. Maybe November or something like that. Who knows, but I, I don't know. Uh, I feel like this should be released in the summer, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, even the big, yeah, you said, I said that. Not being, okay. <laughs> Reading your guy. Most of you guys are just chatting back and forth with each other. <laughs> uh, there we go. I remember I looked at the IMDb page for TCM 2021 and was disappointed to see no sign of Chop Top might make a comeback. Yeah, I think the thing with uh, Chop Top, from what I know, uh, is that he's that the character is owned by a different movie company or something, so they don't have the rights to that character. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre Two is actually owned by a different company. There's a bunch of legalities into it. I'll be honest, so I'm I've never been a Chop Top fan myself. I've never been a fan of that character. I always felt he was very kind of overrated, but. Uh, you know, to to each their own, I guess. But uh, it, I know most most people lo love Chop Top. I'm not a big fan. He's not my favorite. I mean, I did my last week. I did my. I talked about my favorite Sawyer's basically, <laughs> and uh, the elephant in the room was there was no Chop Top on that list. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Filthy Dan says, "Are they taking the Halloween 2018 approach with this one?" As far as I know. 
So we're going to have an old Leatherface. Um, it doesn't, you know what, it doesn't quite add up from what I've read online. It, things say, okay, this takes place 46 years after, and so we're having a 60-year-old Leatherface. So that means he was 14 in the original. That's the biggest damn 14-year-old I've ever seen. So I don't know. We got new chatter. We got Mariaka Markovich and Santi Coronas. Thank you guys for joining in. Glad you guys were able to make it tonight. Uh, boy, we have a lot of chatters tonight. It looks like we're up to 20, I think. I think. That's from what I can see on here. Maybe I'm wrong. Thank you guys all for tuning in. Uh, this is. I think this is a good one to tune into, though, because, I mean, I, I think I'm the only person talking about this right now. <laughs> And in just a bit here, I'm going to start sharing you guys my behind the scenes footage. And I'm sure you guys would like to see that. It's going to be pretty cool. Oh, yeah, Mary Anka, we were supposed to do an intro. I forgot all about I've been so busy lately. Man, oh, man. Uh, yeah, we got we to gotta set something up over Zoom or something. Or, or yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to figure that out. Let me know when you're free. Boy, this week is tough. Uh, maybe next week, though, because Brain is off on holidays. My wife is off on holidays. We can probably schedule something in then. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me, though. I, I'm just, I'm very forgetful. I got so many things on the go. It's hard to keep up with everything. And the older I get, the more I forget about it. Just the way she goes. Um, MGM owns the rights to TCM2, I think. Yeah, that's, so, yeah. Yeah. I don't think we'll see Chop Top anytime soon. Um, I don't. I don't think so. Again, I'm, I'm not a big fan, so it's uh, it's not my cup of tea. But uh, I know a lot of people love him. Uh, I didn't understand how Chop Top was like connected to Leatherface and his father. Well, they're, they're brothers, I believe. They're brothers, if I'm not mistaken. I believe Chop Top was supposed to be uh, the Hitchhiker's twin, Nubbin's twin. Yeah. Uh, why, why do you think they didn't film the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre in Texas? Well, apparently it's super cheap to film in Bulgaria. That's what I've been hearing. And the same with the last film. The last one they didn't film in Texas either. They shot in Bulgaria. So, hey, Cat Blood Media is in the chat as well. Thank you for tuning in there, Josh. Uh, I think it's been a couple weeks since we've seen you too. So, good to have you in the chat as well. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, do, 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 do. lots of people chatting what they didn't yeah the new yeah i know they're insane and i'm from canada and i'm doing everything i possibly can to film in texas <laughs> i'm like going out of my way to make, make to try to raise enough to film in texas it's going to be way more expensive for me to film in texas unless these covid covid re regulations ease up a bit but holy crap it's going to be an extra, probably an extra 500 bucks a day just to film in Texas because of the COVID restrictions. But, uh, you know, uh, Indiegogo campaign coming soon. Uh, please watch out for that. It's coming March 1st, guys. Coming March 1st. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Santa Corona says, uh, where did they explain that? Where where their brothers? You know, I'd have to watch that movie again to, but I, it might not so much have explained. They didn't explain a lot in the, the original. They they were all all three of them were brothers in the original. I always originally thought that uh, the cook uh, Jim C. Dow was the father, but that's kind of what I like about it though is that you don't have all. He's the father like figure, but he's actually a brother too because. The inbreeding in that inbreeding was, was so, so, so deep in that family. Uh, I love it though. I love it. Uh, but I, I love that you don't really know who's from who and, you know, uh, yeah, I love, I love, I love that aspect to it. So where are they filming the new reboot? They're filming in Bulgaria. <laughs> That's where they're filming. Yeah. So there you go. There you go. I think so. That's all the big chats here. So now, since uh, yeah, we're about uh, yeah, we're about eight twenty-five. Does anybody else have anything they want to say about this casting? Do you like the casting? Do you think it's it's wrong? Again, I think it's totally possible that she's gonna pull off this role. I do worry though that it's uh, it's it's probably it could be a just a small little cameo. I just don't see. 
I don't see a big role for Sally in this unless they try to make her this comeback girl that's you know she's gonna come back and save these new kids and she's the the hero again and I I I I honestly honestly I don't feel like Sally would still even be alive at this point. She probably after the trauma that she the uh, she had in the original, she would either be in a mental institution for the rest of her life or she probably would have offed herself cuz that kind of trauma that she had gone through. I don't know. That's just my uh my opinion though. That's what I I mean yeah. It's it's a tough call, guys. It's, it really is. I hope they do it justice. I really am hoping. Um, it's it's cool to see Sally return in some sort of way, but again, if if she's supposed to be like Jamie Lee Curtis was in Halloween 2018, I don't know, guys. I'm not. I wouldn't be excited for that. I just don't think that would work for. I could. I can see why it works for for uh, Laurie Strode. I can't see that same angle working for Sally. I would worry that that's what they're going to do. They're going to try to make her like Laurie Strode. I think like they're really copying that it, it worked for one movie doesn't mean it's going to work for another movie. And essentially it didn't work for cuz they had this idea already of doing a much later sequel with Texas Chainsaw 3D. By all means that movie really didn't work. I mean, I know it. Technically, it made a little bit of money at the box office. Technically, but you kind of look at what it was going off of, and the break that there was between the, then and the last Chainsaw movie, and the I don't know. It's a it was a bear. It was a bear profit. It was really barely a profit, and it was that same idea. Uh, I don't know, guys. It's a uh, it's interesting to think about, but uh, at the end of the day, I, I mean, I hope they do it respectfully. Um, I hope it's done in, in a way where she can have a decent amount of, of screen time, but um, but at the same time, she's uh, she's not the main character. She's not going to be like, like Jamie Lee Curtis was, but ah. Who knows? We'll find out soon. Again, the fact that we're not hearing a lot of no, no, news from this movie is a bit bit concerning. And another thing, I, I want to say this too, guys. I noticed this in the synopsis. Let me read the synopsis of the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre really quick here. Let me just go on to it here. Uh, or it wasn't in the synopsis, sorry. I think it was... The way it was in an interview or something. Yeah, because they don't even have the synopsis. It was, oh, it was in Wikipedia. I might have to go to Wikipedia for that. Let me see. Sorry, guys. I got it. I got it. There's something that caught my eye, and I just have a bad feeling about this. Uh, it's about it has to do with one of the the new the new characters. So where is it? Where is Wikipedia here? And do, 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 do. Uh, feature do, do, do. Uh, Where does it say it here? I know I did see it. Uh, the film's plot will focus on Leatherface, who is now 60 years old and will take place 47 years after. So, oh, that means Leatherface was actually 13 in the original. Uh, again, it is Wikipedia, though. So, I mean, but I, who knows where this, this com comes from, So, where this exact source comes from. Uh, the story will revolve around two sisters, Melody and Dreama. Melody is a 25-year-old San Francisco moneymaker who drags her younger teenage sister... Uh, with her to Texas on a business trip out of fear of leaving her alone in the city. Dreama is an amateur photographer, a wheelchair user who is presumably disabled. I think that's what kind of concerns me, the word presumably disabled. 
what does pres- why would they say why would they go out of their way to say presumably disabled if maybe she isn't actually disabled and she uses it to maybe get attention or something and then she would become like the ass kicker hero in this because Leatherface thinks she's disabled and thinks she'll be nothing and then all of a sudden she you know this it's just what I can see happening I'm not saying this is going to happen it was just something that caught my attention when reading that so I don't know I don't know uh I worry because of that I just don't know why they would say presumably disabled I don't know. I don't know why they would actually go to that effort to say presumably disabled. I don't know. Uh, hopefully, that hopefully I'm totally off on that. I hope I am. I really do. I really hope I am. Um, let's go back to the chat here just for a bit before I start sharing everything. Uh, uh, Feltrick fan says, "I think it said Sally died in one of the sequels. In yes, in one of the crawls. I think in in the third one, if I can remember." Uh, canon is not existent though. Yes, it is. Yeah, it isn't really. I mean, it's, it's all over the place. It really is. Yeah, no way that's true, Santi. <laughs> I don't know what the, what you guys were talking about there, but what? <laughs> uh, oh yeah. Yeah. Anyways, uh, do, 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 do you think the, do you think they reboot the root, the reboot I think would take place in the Leatherface f- family farm? Oh, like where it would take place? Probably. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, the lazy re- reviewer says, "Hope they don't do that to Sally's character. It would be an insult to her character." Yeah, I, I honestly just don't even see the the need to to have Sally in this. But you know, if it's done in a way that's respectful, but at the same time, uh, true, true. They have to be true to the character. And the fact was, at the end of the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, she was she may as well have been dead. She got away, but she may as well well have been dead. Uh, I wonder what Toby Hooper thought of the recent Texas Chainsaw movie, movies before he passed away. You know, he apparently he he gave the thumbs up to like all of all of them. Uh, he gave the thumbs up to Ch- Texas Chainsaw 3D. He gave the thumbs up to Leatherface. You know. Honestly, I think he only cared about getting paid. He, he signed his he got his executive producer and he got paid his share or whatever. That's probably all he really cared about at that point. You know, it, it was he was over it, I guess. I don't know. Um yeah, and that's it's kind of too bad, but uh it is what it is. Uh I'm really excited to see the new movie, but have this feeling that it's going to be really a really bad movie. Hardest, I mean, what do you classify a really bad movie as? There, <laughs> Santi. I don't know. It's uh, it's hard to say. I I don't think it. I don't think it'll be as bad as the recent ones we saw, but we'll see. Uh, for shits, for shits and giggles, filthy Dan says for shits and giggles. How would you describe each TCM in three words or less? Each movie. I have to go through each movie. Um, the original, I would classify as, as, uh, the greatest, the greatest horror. I'll say that's three words. Um, every other film, I don't care. That's three words. I don't care. I don't care. All the rest of them. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I am that guy, man. I, I'm an original chainsaw fan only. Um, uh, and they're all just different levels of, I don't care. They really are. If it ends up being bad, at least we have Steve's fan film to look for. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. And I can't wait to drop this new trailer on you guys. Oh, March 1st. You guys be ready for March 1st. Uh, Sally appears to be a next gen. Yes, I remember that too. It, and, and she is credited as Sally. It was actually Marilyn Burns. I believe she's actually credited as Sally. A uh, movie like she was at the hospital. Like, um, that at least made sense. she That's where you could see her being. But yeah. Uh, damn right, Hilly Billy Man. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's all the big big chats. Hey, Chris Snyder made it into the chat as well. Hey, man, how you doing? Glad you could be here. Uh, I'm going to start sharing uh, the, the behind-the-scenes uh, stuff for you guys. 
Oh, Santi, didn't you like the one from 2003? I like parts of it, but there's 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 a lot of parts that just there's a lot of things in that movie that let me down. Um, yeah, I guess ultimately you can say I was disappointed. I was uh, a little bit underwhelmed from it. I was like first in line to see that movie, Santi, but uh, but yeah, it didn't. It, ultimately, I felt like it was missing something. Yeah. <laughs> that's just me though i know a lot of people love the 2003 remake but uh yeah it really didn't do it didn't quite do it for me not for me i know just certain things and i if you guys go back in, into it was like my fifth or sixth sixth show of, of doing this uh that i actually talk about that movie Somewhere in there, you look at you look at Merlo's movie Massacre. You'll find that show, and I go into a lot of detail on what it is I didn't like about the remake. But anyways, I'm gonna show you guys some behind the scenes shots uh, from yeah from uh, our recent trailer shoots. So we did our first trailer shoot in Texas on January 10th. Uh, I don't have a ton of behind the scenes from that one, but uh, I got some. Uh, I wasn't there, so I couldn't actually be the one getting them. So uh, um, our DP got a couple, and I think uh, one of our actresses got some as well. And thank you guys for doing that, by the way. If they're watching, I'm sure they're not. But anyways, uh, but let's go to the ones that we shot recently. Uh, just l last Saturday on February 6th, we had a pretty awesome shoot there. Behind the scenes, Leatherface was on set too. So here's the first shot I want to show you guys. This is our DOP we had on set. He's setting up a shot here. Uh, this is Paul Sawitzki. I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. <laughs> I, I just call him Paul. Uh, there he is with his Blackmagic camera. So he uh, shot on a uh, 4K Blackmagic uh, something or other. He's the camera guy, not me. But it was a Blackmagic. <laughs> and he's just setting up a shot here. Um yeah, I won't uh, go too into it, but you can see there's a, a meat cleaver and it looks like somebody's fingers are all covered in blood. So, yeah. You'll you'll see when you'll see when we actually uh show you the new trailer. Uh, it's cool stuff though. Yeah. So, yeah, that was Paul. He's uh, he was our Canadian DOP. Our uh Texas Texas DOP was Ronald Ronald Mercado. Uh did a great job. <laughs> Following my instructions over video chat. <laughs> uh, next one. This is our leather face. He's actually wearing. Uh, I know you can't see it too well. He is actually wearing a leather face mask, but it was. It's just a. It's not the one we're actually going to use in the film. And we made sure we actually didn't really get this mask in any shots. We were just using it for more or less for reference more than anything else. And uh, he looks like he's doing some uh, meat packing or something. Uh, if you notice the newspaper there, he, that that uh, whatever he's uh, doing on there, it's that's old newspaper. That's for, newspaper from the 1940s. We were very lucky. The house we shot in, um, this house had uh, a lot of old stuff in it when the when the people that live in it now moved in, and I guess they found all the stacks of 1940s newspaper like in the walls or something like that. It was pretty pretty cool and I, I was like do you mind if we get all this this all these old newspapers all bloody and stuff she's like ah sure why not it's all good because <laughs> that's how that's how they used to like pack meat back in those days too they used to like wrap it in old newspaper like that it's <laughs> funny i know but uh yeah uh anyways moving on here to some more behind the scenes stuff this is just this is just a random shot, but uh, you can see some of our electrical stuff, our lights uh, set up kind of behind there. Um, yeah, not not too much to show here, other than you can probably see the skeleton bones in the distance lying on uh, that uh, raised level there. We kind of set up an interesting skeletal design. <laughs> you guys, you'll see it in the trailer, of course. Hope I'm not spoiling the trailer, but again, it's not. These aren't big things, um, but yeah. I'm not showing you exactly what it looks like either, too, so you, <laughs> you get you get a small idea. <laughs> so, uh, well, then we move to this one here. Hey, there's that uh, Leatherface guy. <laughs> Again, I, I gotta make sure you guys understand, this is not the mask we're using in the film. Uh, I I would never use that this mask. It's a, 
It was a it was a cheap mask I bought on eBay, but we thought, you know, just to kind of get him in the character, um, we thought it would be good for him to at least wear the mask just to just to get into character. So this is Mr. Scotty Parkin, our Leatherface, doing his thing. Get, he's all bloody. You can see we got lots of blood on him. Um, you know, I made lots of blood for this shoot, and I only only used about half of it. I'm I'm kind of thinking, geez, I should have had more, <laughs> but that's okay. So that's uh, yeah, that's him as Leatherface. Uh, but yeah, it will not be that mask. We will not use this mask. I just want you guys to know that uh, it's it's definitely not at the level that uh, that we want. Here's the next one here. That's our DOP Paul again. There was only three of us on set there, guys. It was just me, Paul, and Scotty on set for this. There was really not a lot for us to shoot, but there was a few key things I wanted to get, and uh, we got them. Actually, we got more than I than I needed. I actually have leftover shots from this this uh, recent shoot. Uh, I've I've already put the shots I needed into the trailer, and I got extra stuff. Maybe I'm gonna make. I might make a little micro teaser just to. Just uh, for extra promotion. So, because uh, I got the shots, so it's like, why not? Why not do it? And there they are, both both of them, Paul and Scotty, setting up something. Oh, Scotty's got the meat cleaver. So, yeah, we were getting some pretty cool stuff at this point. And this is just some of our random props. Uh, and there's, uh, you can see the jar of blood. That we have there of the fake blood I made. That fake blood is just uh, it's just um, a corn syrup, chocolate syrup, and some red food coloring, and diluted a little bit with water. But yeah, that's uh, that's all it is. It works pretty well. Um, yeah, I always find it works pretty well. But uh, you can get other stuff. <laughs> you, you can buy fake blood, and some of it's good, some of it's not. But uh, I know where to get the good stuff, but I, I kind of like making it myself. My daughter helped me make it. <laughs> yeah, so those are just some of the set deck and props that we were using. And there's a, sort of a wide shot of uh, them setting up another shot. You can see Scotty's wearing a... <laughs> they're both wearing their masks. Uh, Scotty's not wearing the leather face mask in this shot, though. He's just uh, just wearing a regular face mask. So... Yeah, it was a cool basement we shot, although it was a fairly low ceiling. Uh, I'm I'm 6'2", and I was the shortest one there. Uh, yeah, Paul and Scotty are both pretty close to the same height. They're both around 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, somewhere in there. So they're both pretty tall guys. So we, we had a hard time, you know, not banging our heads on stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can see our lights and everything. It was, yeah, it was a... It was a neat basement, that's for sure. I, I do, uh, I love finding these old basements. It would have taken us a while to shoot in the whole basement because you can see there's all kinds of modern stuff lying around here and there. Not like super modern stuff, but more modern than we would like. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it was it was a very efficient shoot. You know, it, we all knew the, the COVID protocol, so we all took that stuff very seriously had hand sanitizer and wipes and all blah 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 all that kind of stuff and we just uh, you know I just I didn't even have a shot list for him I said hey this is what I want to get just a few shots if we can get extra great great why not uh moving along here oops sorry went saw that one already saw this one too or here oh that's just <laughs> supplies in the back of my car <laughs> you can see a paper towel <laughs> A bag full of goodies. Ooh, that's that white bag is actually full of all the different set deck stuff I had. So like all the skeleton bones and weird stuff that we had some weird stuff. <laughs> a lot of weird stuff. Human limbs and anyways. Fake human limbs, of course. Hey there, Scotty. Just uh setting up for another shot. He's wearing his uh his face mask, but boy, he's a big dude, eh? We definitely got the right guy to play Leatherface. Yeah, that's that's all I can say. He's the he was the, he was the right guy to play this character. Nobody else would have done it as well as as he did, as he has so far. I I mean he he's got more to do for sure. But yeah, he's he was right for the role. And hey, there's me in my Star Wars shirt, and my face mask on. I was setting up something. Oh, I was you know we we all hands on deck. It's not always uh, 
film, film, film. I'm, I was doing something. I was, I think I was doing some, some sort of uh, set deck here. Uh, yeah, just making sure the shot was probably bloody enough. It had to be bloody. <laughs> Things had to be bloody. I could have used more blood, though. Boy, we had a lot of blood. It was tough to clean out of the cement after, though. Had to use uh, had to use um, uh, baking soda and uh, vinegar to get it out, <laughs> so it wouldn't come out with Lysol. Uh, there is a bloody hand from Scotty. <laughs> now that's all our. That's all the Canadian stuff we have. So now let's. Uh, well, I hope you guys dug those. Again, I will be posting all of these to my social media so you can see them all there as well. But, uh, yeah. Pretty fun stuff we had. That was just on Saturday. We just had, we had a good time. Uh, very efficient. Very efficient. It's good to work with people you know that uh, can do the job that you want. So uh, thank you, guys. Thank you both Paul and Scotty for being very efficient. And thank you to Elise Bauer who let us use her her house was more than happy to let us use her house for free for that afternoon. She didn't charge us anything. She was just really happy to be a part of a Texas Chainsaw Massacre fan film. And hey, it's pretty awesome. She, I, we, we showed her the first cut of uh, the fir the first cut of our new trailer without those new shots we got in it, and she was like, "Ooh, that's intense." So I think we've got a pretty intense trailer coming for you guys. If you know, it's not even finished yet. Uh, we didn't we didn't even have all the shots in in at that point, and everybody's like, "Whoa!" And it was kind of to the point where putting these shots in it was like where am i going to put some of these shots i can't use all of them and so that's that's a good feeling though when you know you you have so much that uh that uh that you everything it's all killer no filler i guess you could say <laughs> hey brett man is here or bert yeah filthy death calling him bert <laughs> hey man how you doing you're missing out you've been missing all the wonderful juicy uh, behind the scenes footage stuff. So I don't know how much of that you caught. Um, but uh, I ain't showing those again. So whatever. Maybe I'll show the last one just for for uh, for shits and giggles. Why not, eh? And that was uh, this one here, I think. There's Scotty's bloody hand. Show that one more, one more time <laughs> before we go on to the Texas pictures. All right, from Texas. So this, uh, I believe most of these were shot by Olivia Andrade who's playing the character of Kathleen in our film. So uh, she did an amazing job, by the way. Oh, I look, Looking at her footage, I, I don't want to go into spoilers, but holy crap, she's uh, she does some awesome stuff. This, uh, this is a, a picture of uh, Alicia Graham, or Alicia Jade, as, as her stage name goes by. She's just hanging out, you know, <laughs> uh, not even preparing. I mean, we they had a lot of downtime uh, down in Texas because when we shot uh, down in Texas, um, we had to change our plans, actually. We actually had to change our plans quite a bit in Texas because we had planned to shoot a lot of stuff outdoors. But that one day that we had, you know, we, we planned to shoot, we had booked it way in advance the night before, or maybe maybe it was two nights before, um, one of the actors <laughs> messages me and says, "Just so you know, uh, we have a snowfall warning here for <laughs> for this day for for Sunday the tenth." I'm like, "What in Texas? We don't even have snow here where I am in Canada. You guys are getting going to get snow down there." I thought to myself, you know. All day of the night. There's no way it's going to actually snow there. There's just, there's no way it's actually going to happen. Holy shit, it actually happened. And it like, it wasn't just a little bit of snow. The ground was covered. So all the stuff we had planned to shoot outdoors that day, we scrapped it. Right on the spot, I said, okay, well, I have to come up with all this extra stuff. Just all this different stuff that's going to be interior stuff on the spot and all the actors and stuff they were so game though they were so ready for it they all had to kind of improvise and be ready to shoot stuff that they were hadn't had scripts for and uh so man i give i give them a lot of props on that brad heath is also in the uh chat as well the other half of good real hunting 
the Ernie of Good Real Hunting, right? <laughs> and Chad's Corner. Hey, Chad, how you doing? I don't know if we've had you in the chat before. Thank you for tuning in. We're probably going to wrap it up in about 15 minutes or so, but thank you for tuning in. You get to tune in for the last 15 minutes or so and uh, see the rest of these behind-the-scenes photos that we are checking out. Texas, The Texas Snow Massacre, Hilly Billy Man, Man says, yeah, that kind of bummed me out because I did have all these really cool shots planned and the DOP, uh, Ronald there was like, he was like, I think I can pull the, the there were tough shots I was planning on doing uh, and he was like ready to do them and then all of a sudden we had to scrap, and scrap all of them because we couldn't shoot outside anymore. It is what it is. It, I guess it can snow in Texas. Who would have thunk it, eh? Uh, and even the actors were saying to me, geez, I've never seen snow like this in Texas. I mean, even the ones that have lived there all their life, like, I've seen a few flakes here and there from time to time, but full of ground covered in snow in Texas, that is odd. Really hardly had any snow here. Uh, although it was freaking cold today, and it's supposed to get really cold tomorrow. I'm like, ugh. Wasn't this supposed to be January, not February? But anyways, we had a pretty mild January here where I am in Canada. Other areas of Canada, not so much, but here it's been pretty good. I like it. <laughs> okay, moving on. <laughs> more more of these awesome, juicy, behind-the-scenes behind the scenes photos. I love it. I love sharing this stuff with you guys. I can't wait to post these all on like Instagram and Facebook and whatnot, too, because it's fun. Uh, so from Texas, our second photo from Texas, this is our protagonist on his phone, <laughs> wearing his mask, so he's on his phone. Um, and this, so this is Jordan O'Neill. Uh, Jordan O'Neill has a really, really cool, uh, little, uh, little series he's doing. Uh, it's really well done, actually. It's kind of different. It's called Fable Town. Um, yeah, it's hard to explain it. It's... It, <laughs> It's about, new, I don't know, I, I'd have to let him explain, but needless to say, it's kind of a combination of of fable-type characters in, in New York City, and it's kind of them running their government, and I don't know, it's kind of weird. It is kind of strange, but it's kind of interesting at the same time. But it's a really well-acted and well-shot show, so you should check it out. You can just, uh, I think the, the actual channel is called Fable Town as well on YouTube. So go check that out. I've, I've checked out a couple episodes now and I actually kind of dig it. <laughs> I got to watch more. I got to see how the, how it goes. But he wrote and directed the whole thing. He is a very talented young man, this guy. And again, he, he delivered some great stuff for our trailer. Uh, and most of, most of the stuff that he did we, was last minute, was kind of, you know, we didn't know if we were good. Because a lot of the stuff he was supposed to shoot was out, outside, was exterior stuff. And, uh, you know... I had to have my protagonist in there as much as I could. So he, last minute, he had to wing a lot of stuff. And he came through, man. He came through pretty pretty darn well. Um, one of the scenes, though, was kind of a backup. I, I, I think I sent him already. But, you know, at the same time, he didn't, he didn't really have time to prepare for it. But we're talking pretty minimal lines, though, at least. So that's, that's the good thing about it. <laughs> Uh, anyways, yeah, so, yeah, go check out Jordan O'Neill's, uh, Fable Town. Uh, it's, it's actually pretty cool. He's, uh, he's got, got some good chops under him, that's for sure. And so, yeah, like I said, the, the YouTube channel is called Fable Town, and the show is called Fable Town, so, yeah, go check it out. You might like it. It's kind of, it's different, for sure. If you want something different, hey. So, that's Jordan O'Neill, great young actor from Texas, from Austin, Texas. Uh, we shot this in Austin, by the way. I have no idea what other areas of Texas looked like that day, but Austin was covered in snow. <laughs> but I don't know about the rest of Texas, but yeah, Austin was covered in snow. <sighs> Anyways, here's our next one. This is uh, the, uh, I forget the sound guy's name. <laughs> I never actually got to meet him face to face. Uh, but that's our sound guy, I believe, and uh, it's our DOP Ronald Mercado setting up a shot. Uh, I'm not sure where they're setting up. I think they're just setting up in this kind of hallway area. I think. Yeah, he had a he has a pretty cool little 4K camera as well. 
And yeah, he got they got some great shots for us. That's for sure. They got some really, really great shots. So yeah, cool little behind the scenes photo there as well. Let's just move on to our next one here. Hey, there's Olivia. Olivia Andre. She took most of these photos. You're seeing. She, in fact, this is this is pretty obviously a selfie. Um, but yeah, she uh, she took pretty much all these, other than uh, one or two, I think. And uh, she, yeah, again, I I can't get I can't say enough about the cast. Uh, she plays Kathleen, and uh, we ha again we had to improvise a lot of stuff and. <laughs> And uh, the one of the things that we improvised with her, we had she had no idea that this was gonna that this was gonna happen. And she, holy crap, she delivered something that uh, I don't know how she did it. I again, I don't want to spoil it for you guys, but uh, she did it. She did damn good. Uh, she's a very very good on the spot actress. Uh, yeah, I I really can't say enough about her. Um, yeah, she's she's gonna be great in this film. She's definitely going to do very, very well in this film. And she's just super on board. And and also, she drew, drove all the way from uh, de the, from Dallas, I believe, above, uh, north of, just north of Dallas to Austin. So I believe it, it's like a three-hour drive, somewhere in there. Um, you know, didn't ask any uh, gas money or anything, just was so happy to do it. And uh, and not, not just her, actually, Alicia Graham, actually, this girl here, the first girl I showed you, Alicia Graham, she she actually drove all the way from Louisiana to be in to be in this and also made her own dress. She you know these these guys took care of their own costumes all for the sake of film. Uh, so I mean what more can you really ask for from a from a team, you know, it's they really they really came together to see the best come out of this. And these are all professional actors too. I mean, the, these guys, you know, they they all could have said, "Hey, my fee is this," and they didn't. They were all just that happy to be a part of this. And when it push came to shove, and we had to change the whole script around on this fly, they were all gung ho and like, "Yes, we can do this. Yes, we can do that." And it it really came together. I, I'm really really impressed with uh, with the cast. I really love what they did here. It was. Uh, Really, really fantastic to work with all of them for the first time, even though it was over video chat. <laughs> all right, I got a couple more I'm going to show you here from the Texas cast and crew. Hey, there's the man himself. That's uh, Michael Vincent Berry, who let us use his location as well. This is this was at his house. We primarily filmed in his garage, um, but we used other areas of his house as well. And uh, this is him, right? Uh, I, I did actually share this one on uh, Instagram and Facebook, I think, as well, and Twitter. I, I always share stuff on my on my social media as much as I can. But yeah, we sh we shared this one. He sent he actually sent this this one to me himself. And this is really him in his costume as Rex. He's playing Rex, and you're probably wondering who is Rex. Ooh, we got to keep that a bit of a mystery, though. He's kind of a mysterious character. You don't know. You don't know where he's coming from. Is he good? Is he bad? Is he a member of the Sawyer family? Who knows? There was no Rex in the original. So, um, but you know, who knows? Who knows who this guy is? So, <laughs> and yeah, I really dug that the costume he was able to come up with uh, for it. You know, I gave him some examples what I was thinking, and um, originally I wanted a costume kind of like this to. Uh, make sure that the character was not the same as Drayton. Um, but I was also worried that we're going to have two similar looking people as Drayton. Because in our first trailer, the guy playing Rex had that kind of same look and build as, as Drayton. Um, so I, I was kind of worried that, oh, if we get another skinny actor, they're going to get confused on which one is Drayton. So we'll make his costume so different that you would never think it was straightened. Um, but fortunately as well, uh, Michael doesn't look anything like Drayton. He's a totally different, uh, body type and <laughs> face. Uh, he has a totally different face and everything. So, but, uh, he was totally, totally right. He, oh man, 
I wish I could have got more for him, but unfortunately I could only get him in one one shot um, because all the other stuff that he has in the script in the entire film is exterior. And we wanted to shoot a lot of exterior with him in it as well, but uh, unfortunately we couldn't do it because <laughs> in fact like the, the the that shot wasn't supposed to be done the shot that we did with him wasn't supposed to be wasn't supposed to even wasn't even part of the script that we did but you know i i said to myself we got to have we got to have michael in this we got to have michael as rex in this so this was the only part of the film where he's inside at all so i said okay we're doing this <laughs> <laughs> Billy Dan says, "Holy shit, he looks terrifying." Yeah, he's he's uh he's famously uh known as the unhinged actor, the unhinged actor. Now he came up with that term before the movie Unhinged came out. Just so you guys know, he's been uh been using that as, as his uh, um catchphrase for for years now he's a he's a well-known working actor in the austin area he's been in a ton of films and a lot of commercials he works he's he's a he's a heavy working actor and all these guys pretty much are heavy working actors and and uh really proud of them really proud of them they're all really good and uh yeah so that was michael vincent berry i wish i had more, more of the behind the scenes from texas but we only have so many because I, I don't think we got any of our producer Josh Gurnick, who also did great, uh, again had to, <laughs> had to change all his stuff to interiors as well. But he did he did pretty good. We also got some voiceovers from these guys too, so it worked out pretty good. Santi Coronas, love the cast, love the cast. I got one more I'll show you here from Texas, and that's just of Alicia. I believe this was taken by the DOP, kind of just for setting up a shot. Um, so this doesn't really give the shot away or anything like that, but uh, um, but yeah, it was just to sort of to get her lighting, I guess, more than anything else. So yeah, it worked out. We had that we got this one uh, to show you guys as well. And again, great great young actress. Uh, she's actually more newer to acting than anybody else. Uh, and quite honestly, I I hired her because she screened better than anybody in this role. Uh, I, when I first got her resume and I saw, okay, modeling, we have a lot of modeling here from this girl, but no acting, <laughs> not a lot of, well, pretty minimal acting anyways. Um, and, uh, she sent in her audition and I just couldn't believe it. I actually was stunned, uh, that she, she read for this character as well as she did. And I said, no, she, she's got the role. This girl's got the role. She, she did it. And I hope you guys will see that when uh, when we uh, do the trailer because there's one thing I've been trying to get for years now with the because uh, I've I I've been I've had this Texas Chainsaw Massacre uh, fan film idea for a while and I did do an attempt many 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 years ago and that I was brand new to filmmaking and and made some terrible mistakes but still I always had this vision of uh, this of this scene. And even when we filmed the trailer uh, last year, the girl that was in that in it then, it's just, no, it's not there. It's not right. And Alicia just got it. She just, uh, she nailed it. And that's, that's what I wanted. You know, you have to have the right people in your cast. And I'm so excited for what she's going to do for you guys. I'm so excited with, with, for what everybody in the cast is going to do for you guys because um, I really really behind this cast and and uh that's that's only a, a handful of our cast too i i purposely didn't want to have all of our cast be in this trailer because i didn't want to spoil everybody and uh some people had to come from different areas of texas and it, you know it would have been too much anyways so i felt like let's minimalize the cast and we, we wanted to make sure that you clearly knew who some of the main characters were and all that so um, yeah, so I purposely did that just to, uh, just because I didn't want to give away the whole cast, but now you're going to get a trailer that's got our cast in it. Not, not, uh, not like our last trailer that, uh, well, we got, you know, 
we had a lot more inexperienced actors in that trailer, and I'm sure some of you can tell. Um, but they, they still did okay considering. <laughs> they did okay considering. And uh, some of them still did pretty well, but uh, um, but at the end of the at the end of the day, you know, I got to be pretty minimal of what Canadian actors I'm bringing with me to Texas. And at, I knew that Nika was was totally Allison when I when I first worked with her. Even when I saw her audition, I'm like, no, that's that's what I picture for Allison for that character. And same with with uh, Scotty as Leatherface. He's he was right for Leatherface. Now, could I find other people in Texas to replace those actors? Sure. But I also want to give them the respect that they deserve because they did knock it out of the park for me, the both of them, and offer them those roles. And uh, they both accepted. So uh, they're coming to Texas with me. And everybody else will be from Texas or, uh, well, Louisiana for Alicia. Man, I can't believe she drove all the way from Louisiana <laughs> to be in that trailer for one day. And uh, did a great job, so I'm I'm pretty excited. I I was pretty darn excited uh, for everybody. Uh, if anybody in the chat now, this is a good time to ask me questions. If you guys have any, um, it could be about anything, but you know, it'd be cool to ask any questions about some of the stuff that uh, has to do with that trailer. Hilly Billy Man says, "Can't wait to see the trailer." Ooh, I can't wait to show you guys. Uh, not that our, uh, that I d don't like our last trailer. I do like the last trailer, but I think this is really, I think this new trailer is really going to, going to knock it out of the park for you guys. I think you guys are going to be quite, uh, quite stunned with what you see. I think so. Again, I'm biased cause I'm the <laughs> director, but I'm, you know, I'm also going to have, uh, a few hardcore, uh, TCM fans do, uh, give me their input. A couple, a few people that I know. Uh, really, really no Texas Chainsaw Massacre very, very well to give me the uh, the right feedback that I need um, because it's important. You know, I want to make sure that that this trailer does live up to the way I'm feeling about it just because, you know, I know that I feel great about this new trailer, but, you know, I got to take off the old rose-colored glasses and let somebody else have a look. But, you know, I've also let... Uh, I let uh, Scotty and our DP see it on the on the week. Mind, mind you, minus, minus a few shots, but but uh, you know they both thought it was pretty 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 intense. It'll be intense. It's the best word. It'll be shorter than the last one, but uh, it'll be more intense. Uh, Campbell Media says last trailer was great, Steve. Definitely pumped to make a video on the new one. Yeah, I can't, I'm pumped for you guys to do that kind of stuff too. Uh, hope, hopefully Chris Snyder will. <laughs> oh, you've returned, he says. Hopefully Chris Snyder will do another trailer reaction as well. Uh, I think Jason Knight already said he's going to definitely do one. So yeah, I'd lo I love to see your guys' trailer reactions. I hope you guys are going to love it as much as I do. <laughs> like, uh, my daughter loves it too. I, I shouldn't be showing this stuff to my daughter, <laughs> but she just loves it. <laughs> Uh, sorry if I've been asked that if it's been a, if it has been asked or said before. Uh, but where can we view this fan film once it is done? Oh, well, uh, other than YouTube, it will be like for free to watch on YouTube. But if you wanted to get like a physical copy of the movie, you'll only be able to get it from crowdfunding campaign. Uh, there's a good possibility that the next crowdfunding campaign we do in March will be the last one. It is possible that we'll do one after we shoot the film as well for post-production, but you know, I'm, I would really like to get all the, all my ducks in a row with this one, if I can, rather than do a third Indiegogo campaign in the fall, if I can avoid it, if I can avoid it, but you know what, I might just do it anyways, even if I, if I have enough for post-production, enough funds for post-production, just because, you know, hey, some of you may have missed out on a Blu-ray or a DVD or whatever, whatever you're interested in. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's always possible that we'll do a third one, but, you know, try to do it for the, try to get on it for this one. I mean, it'll be running for 60 days from March 1st to April 29th or something like that. 60 days, whatever 60 days is from March 1st to the end of April. <laughs> Uh, so there we go. Can't wait to see the new trailer as well, says the lazy reviewer. I'm glad you guys are excited to see it. 
Oh, we will do one for sure. That's great. Uh, good. Good Real Hunting is going to do a trailer reaction on it. I don't think you guys were able to do one on the last one as far as uh, from what I remember. I don't remember you guys being able to do one. I don't think we had met you guys yet. <laughs> I don't think I had met you guys at that point. Uh, but yeah, that's cool. And thanks. So thank you guys all for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed that. The next show, full show, <laughs> definitely 100% is going to be a ranking video. I'm not going to tell you what, it, what I'm going to be ranking at this point. But I will be definitely doing a ranking video. Um, I know you guys, some of you have said, when are you doing another ranking video? Uh, next show for sure. I was supposed to do it this time, but, you know, that news about uh, Sally's recasting made me say, I got to do it. I got to talk about that. And plus, I knew I wanted to share all this behind the scenes footage. And I just knew it would take up a lot of time. So, and it has, you know, here we are ending pretty much right on time anyway. So... Uh, thank you guys all for tuning in. Please do remember to hit that like and subscribe button. I really, really appreciate it. You guys have been awesome and have your... Oh, oh before I go, before I go, uh, next show, the ranking video uh, will likely not be till Friday of next week, just so you guys know. So it is a little bit of a gap there, but uh, it'll be worth it for a good ranking video. Uh, yeah, I just got a lot of post-production stuff I got to do with this trailer and uh, so, yeah, it's very important that I get that done before I have to have this trailer done before the next show. I really do. <laughs> has to get done. Uh, but yeah, so it'll most likely be Friday of next week. I'll let you guys know if that changes, but it's probably going to be Friday of next week. Mandy Cantone says, have a great night. Have a great night, everyone. Everyone will see you then. And you guys are awesome. Yeah. <laughs>